Oh, we go over there, Lonnie. Okay, we're going live. Going live, folks. Once again, we are going live. Okay, come on in. Don't be afraid. I know we're scary looking people, but don't don't be shy. Come on in. Speak for yourself, Brad. <laughs> All right, Brad. I'm uh, hi, folks. I'm Bob Trump, physical therapist. Brad Heinrich, physical therapist. Together, we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Three reasons you are in a world of hurt while sitting at work. Now, if you're at work right now and you're hurting, this video is for you. Right. If you got that back pain, low back, neck problems, there's Leg reasons pain, for it. Yeah, uh, arm pain. We're going to go over it all. Um, we're going to tell you how to stop it. So that's the most important thing. Sure. But by the way, if you are oh, new to yes. our channel, if you haven't been over to YouTube yet, please go over there and subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Also, go over to the Facebook and hi, Facebook people, um, and like us because Brad and I, as children, we're not liked. It's a sad story. And if you go to Bob and Brad on Facebook, we'll be there uh, for you too. So we've got that taken care of. Uh, so with the way we run the show, Brad here is we tend to go over the program first. We'll do the program, and afterwards we'll do a Q&A, as they say. It. Question, question and answer. answer. There you go. And it doesn't matter what your question is. If you're having trouble with your personal life, we'll help with that too, right? Well, we'll see what we can do, but we're not going to put any promises there. All right, three reasons you're in a world of hurt. And one of the big ones is often it's just plain old simple poor positioning or poor equipment or lack thereof. And um, I'm going to first mention this, Brad, since I'm wearing this, and people are probably wondering what the heck's going on. Right. Uh, we're big fans of Thermatex. Okay, this is far infrared heat. It's a heating pad type of uh, apparatus. It's the platinum model. Platinum model. It's not the posture model. It's the platinum model. Right. And what's nice about this is they started including straps on it. So the straps can actually help correct your posture right. and put you in a good position and apply deep heat to your back while you're working. The thing about this is regular heat only goes a couple millimeters. This goes 60 millimeters or 2.36 inches. So that's deep. And it's a regular steady heat. I know this is something you maybe don't want to wear at work, but you certainly might want to wear it at home. Brad and I also use it in our chairs at home. Right. If you are interested, we got it in, uh, listed on YouTube right now in our description. And uh, we got a uh, actually a code you can use, and it'll get you a discount, and it'll also get you free shipping sure. on it. So, all right, let's move on, Brad. Um, let's talk about one of the other biggest problems that people tend to have is screen height. Okay. So the computer screen here we have. If I'm sitting at this uh, setup, this is completely on here this is going to cause me pain and problems you know if i've got my keyboard high my screen is low should we talk about the the screen first yeah let's talk about the screen for most people what we have found is their screen is too low and what happens of course if the screen is low what does that bring it brings their head down and it gives them this rounded out posture and the head forward posture shoulders round out everything and and believe me that's one step away from pain right. first step is bad posture Second step is bad pain. Right. So what Brad's going to do here, and you can, you know, the solution here is you can buy something, or you can just take some books and put it underneath. And generally, what you like to see is the top of the screen hits around the top of the head or so, or his eyes are hitting the middle of the screen. And and you're going to find out that works out pretty good. Though. Now he's going to be less likely to have to bend forward to see the screen. Well, right now, last week I worked with a patient. She had terrible neck and arm pain. I looked at her computer workstation, literally raised her screen up six inches. And she said, wow, does that feel better? Just, just like that. Uh, big thing right there. It was easy to do. We had two cardboard boxes that she had to, right behind her filled with things. And Nothing to it. Right. Uh, the other point about the screen I want to make, Brad, because I, I see a lot of people that do this. They actually have it off to the side. Sure. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Right. They'll have it like this. So now the whole time, your neck is just slightly turned one direction. This is the same the true with uh, TVs. If you're at home watching TV, you got to have the TV directly in front of you. Don't have it off to the side. That will play havoc on your body after a while. So then you have to move the TV screen every time. No, you move your chair. Okay. Now, this is my wife is famous for this. She just she arranges the equipment or the, the furniture so it looks good. 
and the, the TV is way over here. I'm like, no, the chair's got to be facing the TV. What's wrong with you? You, woman? Need, you need swivel chairs. Bob. Well, there we go. <laughs> oh, don't give her another excuse to buy furniture. That's all we need. So, all right. What about the keyboard? Now we got the, the screen height. What about the keyboard, Brad? Well, if you put your arms by your side so that your humerus or this part of your arm is straight up, it should be down, vertical. You ideally, this part of your arm should be horizontal. We don't want it up like this or lower, horizontal or lower. So this is way up too high. We want to get this down to this level. And actually, if you put it right on your lap, it could work well, but it kind of has a tendency to slide off. So, you know, you can get these little lap trays. And that's what I use. I use one of those yeah. lap trays. And nice. there you go. And then you can also incorporate using your mouse, mouse with that. Yeah, exactly. You know, one thing I just discovered just in the last year, they have a thumb mouse. Oh, that, really? Yep, that fits right on your keyboard. And you can mouse with your thumb and keyboard. That's really deluxe. Um, nice. Neat. So and not everyone has one. They cost a little bit more, too. But it's an option. So... Yeah. It, you know, this really pertains to people with laptops too. If your laptop is is set up and you have your your keyboard on the laptop is down here, that means your screen is down here. Oh, yeah, I know more about it. Yeah, now you're going to have a world of hurt again. Right. So you're going to want to get a separate keyboard for your lap your your laptop, uh, and you want to raise up the laptop screen so it's up there. And you're gonna have the keyboard down on your lap or down lower, right. so that doesn't give you troubles. They they may, they sell kits, a keyless or a wireless a key, a wireless keyboard and mouse. They they just it'll fit. They're like twenty five dollars. Yeah. At, at the big box. Spend store. the money because you're gonna save yourself a lot of pain. Right. All right. Next, let's talk about the share brand itself. I thought this was a great example of a <laughs> a bad office chair. So you know these are the kind you see quite often. They, you know, they got the base and they got the wheel and all that. But look at this back here once. What, what's going to happen here? I mean, first, <laughs> it's nice for stretching backwards yeah. throughout the day. But the other thing I'm going to do is if it's like this, and if I want to get forward, what am I going to do? Right. I'm going to round out like this. So you really want a chair with a solid back. And quite often what you're going to want to do is supplement that with a back support. And we've got a whole bunch of them here, don't we, Brad? In this particular chair, I, I would go with this uh, memory foam full size back support right here. Put that in there, and you know, yeah. already you've got some decent support. It actually almost it, this isn't bad now. It, to be honest, it just corrected this bad chair. So, um, and you know, quite often there's a whole different types that you can try. You, if you want. You could try a rolled towel to start off with, but to be honest, a lot of times in the office chairs, those aren't enough. And they usually come with a strap that you can put on that'll help hold it in place. Yep. We've got a whole bunch listed down in our our Amazon page. Uh, and I mean, uh, you know, you like this one in your car, don't you, Brad? I, I love this one in my car. I won't go without it anymore. But I, I like it in my office chair for the reason that it is so thick that you can actually work forward like this and it's still giving you support. Right. You don't have to lean back against it. So it, it seems to work pretty well. And it's one of those things, everybody's body's a little different and your chair is a little different. That's why we, we have examples of four different back supports and you really just have to trial and error with it. I, I, I can't just yeah, over the can, internet give you, this is the one for everybody. Everybody is different. And it's, uh, we're sorry, we wish we could recommend that one. You know, that one we, fits all. Yeah. But it, the other thing is if you are a little bit of a shorter person and you have the chair raised up, because you want to have the chair raised up to the point where um, your your thigh is level. Right. And that shows you on this chair, again, my, my knee is higher than my hip. But sometimes what you need to do if you're a shorter person is you need a footrest. And we're going to mention this footrest. Um, it's, it's actually a different type. It's actually foam, and it's soft, and it's got kind of a textured surface. So, like, if you have your socks on. Kind of gives you a little if you massage. want to take your shoes off when you work, because some people yeah. do do that. Look, just back way, Bob. Because right now, this is at work. We've got a woman. She's short. She's got a taller chair to adjust her to her height because the desk is tall. We can't change that. So her feet are dangling. Now, not as much as mine, but they're dangling. But this, when you put that down, and then well, I'm not gonna be able to see you it. Have some, like, oh darn it! But that's Lonnie. Well, uh, yeah, Lonnie can angle it down. Yeah, Hold on. Show down there so that. The, the nice thing about this particular device is you can put it 
either direction if you want your toes to point down and it's arched so you can actually rock your ankles which is good for uh, circulation and uh you know getting comfort while you're sitting there you're not in that static stuck position and i pulled this up here because i didn't remember the name of it it's made by ergonomic innovations and it's a memory phone also a memory phone footrest and i'll i'll put that in a link below on the youtube too eventually i'll get it over to facebook too but it that might be a couple hours because I got to go over to work after this. So sure. I, and it's never on there right to start off with. All right. So once you've taken care of all your equipment needs, then you want to go ahead and make sure you are doing some stretches. Sure. And and these are stretches you can do. You can do them hourly or how often did you used to have people do them? Well, it was at least every half hour. Every half hour. Right. And they only take. They only take 20, 30 seconds. It, you know, it depends how long you want to do them, but at least it's a reminder. And so you can have it, if you're a good computer person, put it so on the screen and blinks up and gives you a little reminder. Doesn't You can still work with it. It's just in the corner. Yeah, and if you're worried about productivity, the fact is you are going to be more productive if you actually take these little breaks and take a stretch because you're, you're going to come back a lot more focused. Right. So let's, let's go over some of the, the exercises, Brad. Let's okay. go. The first one is, and we've done these many times, is uh, chin tucks. So you're actually going to tuck your chin in like this, and you're not going down like this. You're not going back like this. But what I like about this one, Brad, it not only uh, is an exercise in the stretch, but it's a reminder of where your head should be. Right. Because if you're like this, you do some of these chin tucks. Now you got your ears over your shoulder. That's where they're supposed to be. I just realized the skeleton's looking over the thing. At it. It's kind of creepy. That <laughs> is kind of weird. No, they can't see it. But they can't see we'll it. show them on another video. Yeah. All right, so chin tucks. Next one, you can just go ahead and do some neck range of motion. Right. You can do some rotations side to side, and you can do some extension. This is one people tend not to do, and they should be doing it because it often is the one that's tight. Right. So you want to work that going back like that. You know, to be honest with you, there are some people that I've worked with, and I say, I have the show them the towel stretch, and uh, I say, just keep a towel right there at your desk, and you can use that, put it around here, and that can help make a more comfortable Yeah, it makes stretch. it a lot more comfortable yeah. stretch, and it feels a lot better, right. so that's not a bad idea to keep a towel by your desk, and then when people and come by you, that you don't like, you snap them. Or, or if you spill your coffee, you can... There you, it go. It's, there you go. It's multi-purpose. All right, next one, Brad, is uh, we're going to go ahead and do some shoulder squeezes. So you're going to go just uh, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Just real simple to do. There. And we're trying to make these fast so they don't take too long. Uh, forearm and wrist stretch. So you're going to go ahead and look what Brad's doing. He's going down, down. and then he's going out like right. that. Down, out like that. And, and then another thing is throughout the day, and you can do this while you're working, is just taking a deep breath. Right. Fill up those lungs and exhale and just let that body relax, make that a habit. Very good point because as you're working, you tend to tighten up and there's less blood flow, and that's what starts uh, resulting in pain. You can also stretch the wrist this way. You grab onto the palm and pull back like this and, and work it that way in, in, uh, in addition. All right, then the, the hallelujah stretch, you want to show that oh, over sure, this, Brad? Sure, You know, depending, if you have a tall back chair, this will be more difficult. But if you got it here or at the shoulder blade, it really works out That's well. That's what's nice, actually, Brad, is you, if you have one of these back supports, yeah. you can actually move it up and down when you're doing the stretch. Go ahead. Yeah, put it in there, Bob. So, oh, yeah. No, he could even move it up a little bit and stretch the mid-back more yep. and, and work that part. Oh. All right, don't fall asleep on me, Brad. And then the final one, Brad, is just go ahead and stick your leg out like this and, and pull the toe toward you, and you're doing a little bit of hamstring stretch then. Hamstring and heel cord stretch at the same time. Yeah, Brad, why don't you show that one because you got the pants on. Yeah, so you can see I'm pulling it back. And you can take your hands, grab under your knee, support that leg. It's easier to get a, a better stretch. And make sure you do both legs. Did I tell my joke about if you only do one leg, Bob? Sure. You'll walk around in circles. That's that's just that's as funny it. now that it's the you know the first time I heard it because yeah. it's been like three hundred times ago. All right, why don't we show this desk, Brad? Yeah. Uh, this is kind of actually a bike desk, and it's by Flex the Spot. Um, Flex the Spot. They also have desks that are sit to stand desks, and um, I you know at first we we did a couple of videos on it. And I was kind of lagging on taking it home and trying it myself, 
And finally, I set it up. And I actually have two computers. I set one up with the stand, and I set up one where I could sit down. But you can do both with right. the same desk. Right. But I love it. I, I, I stand more than I sit now. And it, it actually keeps me in good posture. And yeah, they're so, really becoming much more popular in the workplace that sit to stand. But this is actually a bike one that's, that you can actually bike and work on it. Where, so, so then you're actually getting the benefits of increasing your circulation. Oh, I got to adjust my. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was kind of neat. But it's an easy adjustment. What did you do? I adjusted the seat up another six oh. inches. There. And so then you can actually get your some circulation of legs. Which actually brings us to three reasons you are in a world of hurt if you're not having any movement. So that it's very important that if you don't have a desk like this where you can actually bike at, you, you get up and you walk a little bit. Uh, make you know excuse, go to the water fountain, go to the bathroom, right. go to the copy machine or whatever it is. But on a regular basis, you got to have some movement too. If you just sit and focus on your screen, you're going to run into problems. You're going to start getting into pain. Right. So those are the three things. Poor positioning and equipment, no stretches, and, and no movement. Right. You correct those three things, you're going to find out your pain levels are going to go down. So and that's it in the nutshell, Bob. That's it. So, so we're going to start taking questions, Brad. If Lonnie has any, we can. Well, I'm going to see if I can get a couple miles on here. Is this bad for your back to have your legs dangling down with your quick neck support? Is it bad for your back to have your legs down and your feet not supported? I would say no. The, the problem with that is you get uh, compression uh, underneath the thigh, it, it cut off pain, and 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 uh, it, it the comfort is, discomfort is there. It actually probably is not bad on the back. Wouldn't you agree, Brad? Well, I, unless it tends to round your back for whatever reason. But I would agree. Like, so I, I would say because if my legs are dangling, like let, let's just look at this. Here, if my legs are dangling, usually that that doesn't make your back run around. So I probably not so much on the back. But like Bob says, it it cuts off the circulation that goes to your legs, and particularly if you have already have some circulation problems in your feet and ankles, that even you know compounds it. So yeah, just take the time to get some. Uh, you know, you don't have to buy one of these, but they do work well, or, or just get a box or whatever to get it up so that your feet are not, are supported, because it's, it's easy to do. Somebody asked about driving uh, and driving position, and we've done videos on this, but let's go over some of the basics here, Brad. Oh, sure. So with driving, a lot of the same issues occur. Um, you're going to want to uh, first, again, have your seat fairly upright. Don't have it leaning back like this, like right. the low rider here. Uh, you want to have it forward, fairly close to the steering wheel, to the point where your arms can be again upright here, vertically upright, and you got it at the right angle. And we actually usually have you grab it four and eight o'clock you know, at the steering wheel. Right. You know, some people. Clock. My, my sister-in-law grabs hers up like this, and it brings her arms up like that, and. It, it really causes a lot of tension in the upper traps. And yeah. also, it could even round out your sure. back. Yep, so get down on that steering wheel like that. We actually have a video we go through the, the whole setup, the car seat, how to use a lumbar support. Um, so that's a good one. And, and the point that Brad just made is you are going to want to have some type of lumbar support. Right. Brad, again, loves this memory foam one in the car. Um, it just works out really well. I didn't like it at all. I like a thinner one yep. that I put in there. but. I, you know, in most cases, you're really going to want to make sure you have some type of support. You really could start with a rolled towel and see how it is for comfort. And a lot of cars have an adjustable lumbar support, and some people don't even know their car has it. I've had patients where I walk out to their car to, to put one of these in to test it, and I look, well, well did you ever try adjusting yours? And they say, I didn't know even it was there. Yeah, <laughs> so you want to make sure you, you, you know you decide if you do have one. The other thing, if you look at where your left foot is, wow. there's a little, uh, what would you call that? A little Brad? foot platform there. A little foot platform. Put your foot up against that, and it'll it could, it'll push you back into the seat, and it'll give you your, some support for your overall body here. Yep, just so, slide your bottom back as far into the seat as it'll go, and you'll feel that support on your back, and it will definitely feel better. So I hope that helps. I uh, don't know if that's why they put it there for that reason, but I, I don't know, but that's what it works for, that's for sure. So what about those pedaling devices under the desk? Yeah, those are great. Sure, you bet. Uh, we tell the question again, Brad. What, what about the pedaling devices to keep your feet moving under your desk? As long as they fit fine there and, and it's free pedals, 
and you you know that's great anything to get your circulation movement going while you're working uh, is going to work out well so someone is asking here brad any good tips for students who uh sit and study for hours well brad and i have been there i mean we, we've done this our, ourselves right so you know one thing you want to follow all the things we were saying especially if you have a, a laptop that you're going to want to make sure you have the separate uh, keyboard and the mm -hmm. separate thing. Sure. Don't be sitting on your bed and going like this. Oh, like yeah. Th this, this is, is what my, my daughter was doing. This absolutely got I mean, that's in bed. She would do the Indian cross-legged position with a laptop here. So he's rounded out here. He's got a forward head. That's going to start resulting in pain. I always try to mix it up, Brad, to the point where even now when I do my reading, I'll, I'll do some reading sitting up and then I'll lay on my stomach even and read for a little sure. bit. I prop myself up with pillows yeah. and, and put the book down here just to change position for a while and, and take some of the stress off. Yeah. There, so I, I read my recliner and I have, Oh yeah. I have a lumbar support. I have a neck support. And then I use one of these for the computer. I mean, then I have other supports that I can, it's like a whole ergonomic sure. nightmare if you will, but I use <laughs> everything and it's, it's very comfortable. And then he puts the Thermotex behind him. Yeah, uh, I he, do. He, he puts the heat, the, uh, the heat farm for the heating pad behind yeah. his back. So. All right, Lonnie, do you have any more? We'll go all go over here. Questions, what about people who have our age? Right. We, we so, just had a video, and we're going to be putting those up in a couple of days on a, a real patient that has. Uh, the question. See, so, see. what about uh, what do people do? They have rheumatoid arthritis. Right. What What are some of their factors? And oftentimes, as far as the body mechanics, it's similar. Yeah. They still want to work on their posture. The relaxing and the breathing uh, things they talked about are probably going to be even more critical. Um, but getting up and moving around and get some circulation is probably even more important for people with RA. So to get up and go for that walk, if you could take that break and go for that walk. Well, I'm, what Brad was just mentioning, do anybody know what the date today is? Is it May 3rd? Yeah, I think so. So today is May 3rd. Tomorrow on May 4th, if that's Friday, and May 5th, we're going to have two videos on YouTube about rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia. By a, a real patient. By a real patient and how she managed it. And so you're going to want to make sure you watch that if you have rheumatoid arthritis right. or fibromyalgia, either one, because they're very similar as far as the treatments. And she does a wonderful job of uh, uh, telling her history. And someone else here is asking, Brad, what about to do about those knots up in the upper trapezius? Oh, yeah. Brad and I just did a video, and that one we'll put up probably on Monday, maybe. Okay. Monday or Tuesday of next week. Uh, so if you're watching this, uh, watch for that one because that'll go over all the trigger point uh tips that we have right so there's seven yeah there's seven so you're not going to want to miss that so right and seven's a wonderful number when you get seven here we go again here gonna, we go you're gonna have Brand is seven. complete success is there an ideal height that the chair should be at yeah the ideal height that the sh she's asking if there's an ideal height that the chair should be at i would generally like it so that my knees if you if you go put a, a point right through my knee and a point right through my hip, uh, it, yeah, there you go. If the knee might be just slightly higher than the hip, just slightly higher. You don't believe that? I like it lower. Oh well, I guess you could have. Uh, this is going by what Zach used to put in his. Oh, book. okay. Well, so, there, there's a little theory difference yeah. between even therapists, but for sure you're not going to be right. You don't want to be this way or this way. You're going to be close to level, right? Basically, right. is yeah. what you want to be doing. So um, that's why there's going to be a lot of variety between uh, someone who's short and someone who's tall on, on the chair. And, so. and there's a lot of variables because sometimes the desk is high, so you need a higher chair just to get up to the desk, and then your feet start You dangling. make a good point, though, Brad, because I do like my knee a little bit lower than my hip. Sure. I, I prefer it that way because it's easier to keep my back straight. It, he's talking about an author who wrote a book on posture, yeah. and it's very well uh, written. And, and very well referenced. Referenced, right. So, so uh, the... Things continue to evolve and change as life goes on, as we all know it. Back to the number seven. <laughs> just think it's Bonnie, do you have any more? No. No? How are we doing? What time is it? Anyways, Someone's we got to get to work pretty soon. Screen. Somebody is raising their computer screen right now. Oh, that is wonderful. I think the only question is, why is there no back support? I'm kind of wondering. She's talking about the bike. Oh, yeah, the bike does not have any back support. This is not going to, you know... It, right, because you're pedaling, 
you're up. It's uh, the, the object of this is is to keep movement the, while you're. The way working. you could use this bike is what we were taught is one you can pedal a little bit and then you can go around and actually turn around and stand up like this right. and and use it both ways. You can pedal. You'd have stand. to turn the screen around. Yeah, that would work out better, wouldn't it? So, but yeah, so that is not made to pedal on it all day long. It's going to be for 20 minutes or so, and then, you know, go on with your work. All right. well, we want to thank all of you for yes. watching again. We really love all of you, and someday we'll make sure we write thank you notes to every one of you. That's your job right away, Brad. So, well, you're going to have to wait a while. I'm telling you that much until I get to retire or something. Then I'll start writing. All right. Thanks for watching.